Hi everyone and welcome along. Our quick fix is a little bit different this week because I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you all about how I went from being a set and costume designer who maybe did a little bit of drawing, a little bit of acrylics, I didn't really like colouring in to be honest, um, going from that to becoming a watercolour artist and tutor, um, absolutely adoring my job. It's a bit of a, a leap, a bit of a journey, so I thought I'd just do some painting tell you the story and of course you can comment below to ask any questions you have about my journey of creating this career um so yeah so i thought whilst i had a chat i would paint just a little a little doodle for you really which i'm going to start off by masking off this rectangle so seven years ago we started the de winton paper co because i painted no i didn't even paint gosh i was I was doing a graphic design version of an invite for my stepsister's wedding um, and the irony is as I was making it look like it was all painted and then a friend of mine who was a wedding planner said well hang on a sec if you're going to do this for a, for a living why not actually do do the real thing become a watercolor artist and so honestly it wasn't until that point that I'd really even tried watercolors at all so that's the first thing I want to say to you all is it's never too late to start something new because um, I'd really, I would picked up paintbrushes of course over the years and I very much enjoyed drawing and painting but I had never really tried out watercolour and so I really want to tell you that as a, as a self-taught watercolour artist What's wonderful is I feel on one hand, okay, yeah, it's a little bit intimidating when you're coming up against real traditionalists, very experienced people. Actually, the beauty of being self-taught or being less knowledgeable is that you don't know your limitations. Um, and I think one of the big things with that is actually these brushes that I use. I've had lots of comments on YouTube in the past that these brushes are inferior um, brushes when it comes to watercolour because they're mixed media but you will have seen me draw and paint with these for well that's the last two years really and just show how amazing they are when it comes to my kind of watercolour painting and they are um, they are available in my shop this exact set um, from four tenths through up, up to size eight you can get this exact set from me in my Etsy shop but the reason I'm so excited to be able to sell them is because for me they really are the best brushes um, because they've got a good snap on them they're quite stiff they're synthetic bristles but the thing is, is I don't think I would have found these had I not been a fairly clueless beginner because I just found a brush that was affordable that was mixed media because I was trying out lots of different things and yeah, we just, it was a love story from the start. So um, that's what I would say is if you're starting out, please don't worry about um, having all the really, really highbrow kit um, to start off with. You're very welcome to try whatever you want over time, but you don't need to have everything at the very beginning. Just get yourself a little set of brushes just like these. You don't need tons of different sizes um, and paints you can build up over time but you can get yourself a nice little travel set palette which is what I started with and I sell in the shop. Um, sorry, trying not to make this a hard sell at all but it just seems like a really natural progression from saying this is how I started and I actually really, um, really benefited from people just saying yeah, just start with this and then see how you go. Now the other thing, right, I'm going to pop in this circle here and I want to just try to draw a little circle anyway so yeah so I was designing my stepsister's wedding stationery and then was said was told well why don't you just try doing the real deal so I did and it was absolutely love at first sight I just adored painting in watercolor and I guess because I've always been a freelancer I have just always been quite fearless when it comes to starting up a new business um, because what's the worst that can happen if you've got a uh, well mine was very much a side hustle at the start I had my set design job which was creative admittedly but we all need something that's going to pay the bills whilst we start setting ourselves up 
but for me the huge huge um sort of step forward was when instagram started doing instagram stories because i always felt that ironically even though i'd tried using like watercolor graphics packages before i even knew i could be a painter um watercolor graphics packages are like really effective and i was worried that people wouldn't actually realize that i was painting their wedding stationery from scratch and it wasn't anything to do with any pre-bought pre-designed things so i started using instagram stories to demonstrate the process to people and i would chat away and i'd sit and paint very much like this and i would just sort of demonstrate to people that what they were paying for was something that took a lot of time a lot of care and also even though i was self-taught in watercolors i've been drawing and painting and studying that my whole life and whether it was a set designer or as an illustrator for books or a stylist i was very much building up my skill set so that i could do a great job for them so i'm going to start now with a wet page i've kept that circle nice and dry i'm just going to start blending in colors so i'm starting with yellow ochre so it was instagram stories and the painting that got me noticed by my book publisher and by uh sort of higher profile events that were sort of invited me to come and teach watercolors to larger classes and that was really how I started building a meaningful audience of people who wanted to learn watercolors as well as people who wanted to ask me to do wedding stationery for them and so I really feel like I fell into the teaching side of things I was just a, a wedding stationer I really wasn't setting out to teach people um, so I'm just so grateful to having that very simple Instagram story platform where I could just I could just chat and a lot of people just found it very relaxing as well to watch someone just sort of blend paint on a page so that's how it all began and then honestly I just said yes I said yes to every opportunity that came my way whether it was a wedding that was a much bigger budget and bigger scale than I'd ever done before which was extremely intimidating at first um, or if it was writing a book and so new botanical painting was my first book that i wrote in about 2018 i think so it's really not been that long and i learned on the job i painted those flowers over and over and over again until i thought they were good enough but it was all with these brushes um, they just did me proud really so I've just done all of that with a size 8 brush and now I'm just going to just just tidy it around the edge with a what have I got here it's a size 0 there we go so we're just going to allow that to dry and what's going to happen is that's going to dry a whole lot lighter than the uh, the color that it looks at the moment it's amazing how watercolor does sort of fade down as it dries so yeah that was the next step is writing the book and goodness me that was probably the biggest challenge of my life to date but honestly the process of painting is just so relaxing and therapeutic and i know a lot of you know that already and that's why you're here and that's why you love to come and watch um but if you come just to watch to relax i highly recommend you give it a go and actually pick up the paintbrush yourself because it is just so good for the soul and over the last two years whilst we've all been dealing with the pandemic it is an incredibly therapeutic escape from the sort of challenges of the real world to just come and sit with a piece of paper some paints brushes and water and just relax right we've let that dry so we can start to peel this off so I'm sure there are a number of you who are watching who love to paint um, but maybe wonder about how on earth you turn it from a hobby into a job and I, I've got to say there's there's no one set way of doing it because of course I like to paint um, but I began by creating wedding stationery for people some people paint and paint 
portraits, landscapes, they paint commissions for people. Some people paint and illustrate books and work with publishers um, or work with uh, places online like Creative Market where you can license out your illustrations and sell them like that. There are so many ways of doing it and I think rather than say this is how you do it, this is the one set way, the one thing that I can offer you is an idea of a work ethic because freelancing is um, a, an obsession. I think when you are lucky enough to do a job that is also your passion, you have to think, well, if it's a passion, passions are usually fairly all consuming. And that is so true of working for yourself. You have to be really driven. The likelihood is, is you're thinking about it morning, noon and night. Now let's just see, is this dry? I think it's still just the tiniest bit damp. So we do have to be careful. But how lovely is that shape? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be layering up some lovely sort of plant life over the top of it. And I want to turn this into a, a delicate kind of moon. So we can start with that, actually. Um, so I think the other thing to do is to write down what you would like from your life in terms of do you want to have time to yourself, spare time, um, do you want to be absolutely in love with the job you're doing or is it more about actually you just want to be able to have sort of a sort of disposable income to go and spend time with your friends and family when they're free as well because the one thing that I will say, oh fluff on the brush, got one of Crumble's hairs lurking in here, is Ant and I do have to sacrifice our time. But for example, today we're filming and it's a Sunday. We film um, on a day when most other people are having a day off, but we do it so we can fit everything else into our week. Um, it is something that we've had to sacrifice, but at the same time, what we love is during the week, it means that we can take uh, a few hours off here and there, say on a Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, and go do something nice maybe when everybody else is working in the nine to five. So it's um, it's a sort of, yeah, it's a toss up really between what you want out of life. Um, so now I'm going to just give it a little bit more shadow underneath, which also helps me just create the shape a little bit more. So there's my moon. Quite pleased with that. Right. But yeah, if anyone's got any sort of more specific questions, I don't know about like how you turn how you turn your your paintings into stationery. I mean, that is a whole technical thing, but at least I can sort of give pointers and tips of the kind of um, computer programs that I use. I use Photoshop, for example. And I'm not very computer literate, but I just learned Photoshop and I was like, OK, as long as I can just work on that, then I'm happy. OK, so now to give it the old finger test. I think I'm happy with having a go at painting in some leaves over the top. Um, so the other wondrous thing about doing the YouTube channel is, of course, it's allowed Ant and me to work together. OK, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's looking nice. I like the idea of it just sort of sprouting out. Because he is a photographer uh, in, his, in his main job. So when we were thinking about how to do the YouTube channel, well, we were very lucky that he already had some equipment, even though we didn't really know what we needed. And it is wonderful now that you can actually start your own sort of content just from using your phone really you don't need all of the kit it's something you can build up to eventually but yes yeah, so i have a, a wonderful partnership with ant and that is extremely helpful i must say OK, 
Okay, so this is just going to come creeping in from the side too. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but that's the other beauty of striking out on your own is there's so much unknown. And if you can embrace uncertainty and see it as a motivator, then you're going to be fine. Because I still struggle with control. Um, it's a very strange feeling, not quite knowing what your, what your paycheck's gonna be each month. Um, and actually having as, as sort of successful or as established as you get, having just that little sense of uncertainty each month keeps you on your toes and keeps you hungry for it. I sometimes think the one word of caution I do have about all of this kind of thing is the idea of making your passion into your job, you can run the risk of slightly um, falling out of love with it. Because suddenly the thing you did for relaxation and enjoyment and escape from the rest of your life is now very much your life. So that's why I play a lot of tennis, because I need to have something that has nothing to do with a job as much as I would love to, uh, at the grand age of 36, become a professional tennis player. I don't think it's gonna happen. So I will settle for playing as much as I can and, and enjoying it. So balance in life is, is hard to find when you are freelance, but it's not impossible. I think you just have to prioritize it actually. You have to recognize that if you're happy in yourself, then you're going to be able to create better work and be a better business owner and have a better relationship with your clients. Um, in terms of finding those clients, yeah, where on earth do they come from? Well, good old social media again. So uh, Instagram was still well, it was just about sharing pictures when I first started on Instagram. Um, but actually now, even though some people might sort of say, oh, it's, it's more difficult now to be sort of seen on Instagram. The one thing I will say is there are so many different, um, different ways to be seen on Instagram. You've got all the video content you can do, all the different things like guides, um, reels. I don't use I probably use about 5% of the potential of my Instagram. But, and I know some of you aren't keen on social media, so there are always ways of just having a, a lovely website, um, allowing people to find you that way, writing a blog maybe about your creative process. I think the most important thing is you is be authentic. I love what I do, and I just want to sit and paint most days and I, I'd like to think that comes across in my Instagram, my Instagram stories and my YouTube tutorials, the genuine enjoyment and wonder at what watercolor can do. I think there is that fine line and that's why I always feel a bit strange when I'm telling you to like, oh, well, you can go and buy brushes on my Etsy store and things. I, that feels a bit strange for me, but at the same time, I know that after two years of using these brushes on YouTube, I know that it's just a genuine sort of shout out to say, aren't they great? And uh, if you're looking for brushes, then these are always the ones I recommend because I do get asked a lot about kit and equipment. And you can always find that in the episode notes below if you're ever looking. But yeah, I think if you've got something that is truly your passion, then it will, you can't help but inspire other people to see the benefits of it too. Um, I've just absolutely adored sitting here and painting this with it's got no real purpose. I don't know what it means. I don't know why the moon is sat amongst a load of branches, but it's made me really happy. 
and it's given me a chance to chat to you guys. So what's next for De Winton Paper Co? Well, I'm not entirely sure other than working with a lot of wonderful wedding couples who have sadly had their, their weddings delayed over the last two years. Continuing to love working with my patrons, developing their artistic skills, and being part of that lovely community we've got there. Honestly, it's so friendly. Everyone's amazing on Patreon. Um, and just continuing to enjoy interacting with all you guys on YouTube and finding new ways to help you in your painting journey, whether it's um, sourcing and being able to supply art supplies for you, whether it's free tutorials, whether it's a bit of a Q&A, like I say, just comment below if you want to ask me any questions and I will try and answer the best I can in terms of my story and getting to this point and how it can help you. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little doodle. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this has inspired you to maybe take that first step in turning your hobby into a side hustle or maybe just getting creative for the sake of it. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like this that everyone enjoys. And if you feel inspired to get started with painting and need some art supplies, then you just have to go to my Etsy store, all the details in the episode notes below, and you'll find everything that I use and everything you could possibly need. Um, of course, don't miss another video by subscribing. Hit that subscribe button and the little notification be bell below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!